So, I just got back from an incredible eight days exploring in and around Santiago, Chile for my entire reading week and it was one of the best trips of my entire life. Now, we traveled with exchange students, locals, kind of people that had never been there before and I came out of the experience with a few things about Chile that I didn't know before and I'm really happy to share them with you because if you are planning to go to Santiago anywhere in Chile or in that general area, then these are top 10 things you must do while you're there. But I will say, just a little disclaimer, this is my personal opinion, these top 10s, so if you think something could be a little different, if you think that you prefer something else, it's very suggestive and open. So. Here it is. Number 10, you have to do this. This should either be the first thing you do the first night or the last thing you do the last night. If you're looking to splurge a little bit, please go check out the Noi Hotel in Las Condes. You can get great patio drinks and cocktails, a little bit more expensive than what you typically get, but the view from the patio and the rooftop is absolutely insane. 10 out of 10, that's why it's number 10, worth checking out. To your left, where we were sitting at least, from our perspective, you've got the Andes. From the front, you've got the Andes, and to your right, you have the entire cityscape. It is a must go. If you're willing to splurge a little bit, this is the one thing I will say you should spend a little bit extra money on, on this entire list. Go to the Noi Hotel in Las Condes. It is spectacular. Number nine, you cannot go to Santiago without going to Plaza de Arma and Palacio Moneda. These are government regulated buildings, the sort of the seat of the president is Palacio Moneda. These are some of South America's most incredible buildings and most beautiful architecture. And if you're into that sort of stuff, if you love buildings, if you're like me and you like hyperlapses, this is the place to go. You have to check it out. Very easy to access to through the metro, through taxis, incredible spot. Go there, great pictures. Now, number eight, this one could be an entire top 10 on its own, but you have to visit Viña del Mar and Valparaiso on your trip to Santiago. These are two cities only about two hours away from the capital, right along the Pacific Ocean on the coast, and they are absolutely stunning. Valparaiso and Viña are about 15 minutes apart, and they're only about two hours by bus from Santiago. If you take one of the coach bus rides from Santiago, then you can go there for about a round trip of approximately $10 Canadian. So I would say about $7.50 US. And you can easily do these in a day. If you wanna stay a little longer in Valpo, I really recommend La Jolla Hostel. That's where we stayed. We aren't endorsed. It was just a very comfortable place, very modern. It was very accommodating, comfortable, and perfect hostel experience while you're there. If you're going, soak up Chilean culture, go check out the little streets, the nooks and crannies of the cities, and really indulge in what Chile has to offer because I guarantee if you go, you will not regret your stay in Valpo and Viña. If you can, spend a little bit more than a day or two, spend a few, but if all you have is one day, make sure you check it out. Go take that bus. It is so worth it. Number seven, and this is one of my favorite things. We did this on the first, pretty much the first couple hours we arrived in Santiago. This is visit Parque Araucano. This is right in Las Condes in the wealthier part of the city. It's not the most Chilean and authentic experience as our friends on exchange told us, but the park itself is absolutely stunning. In my opinion, it is even more beautiful than Central Park or the parks that have been through throughout London and Munich and the beer gardens out there. This is the most stunning and beautiful park I have ever seen in my entire travels. Go check out the gardens, go relax and sit down in the fields, go play tennis if you want, go grab your skateboard or your bike and check out the two big skate parks there. This is a must must see in Santiago. It's very easy, it's free, but the only tip I will give is that on Mondays they are closed for maintenance. Make sure if you're going it's not on a Monday. Dedicate plenty of time for it. It is so so fun, so cool, and 100% one of my favorite things I did on the entire trip and we did this right off the bat. Numero 6. If you want a really Chilean experience, please 100% do not question this. 
go grab some Terremotos at Piojera. It is about 10 to 15 minute walk from Plaza de Armas and it is a very Chilean dive bar sort of thing. There's, it's, it's like a Chilean pub is how I would describe it to friends. And so you go in and you have these drinks called Terremotos which is in English translated to earthquakes. So you already know it's gonna shake you up a good bit. And what it is, is you get a glass about this big and it's full of pineapple ice cream and then you toss in some white wine and throw in some grenadine. You mix it all up so then it gets really creamy and it's really, really sweet. And the one thing I will warn you about is that these things will creep on you super, super quickly because they do not taste alcoholic even though they are packed to the brim. They're fantastic, it's a great place just to socialize, maybe interact with some locals, or just spend a couple hours, an hour, with some of your friends and enjoy one of Chile's nicest drinks. Totally recommend it, and this is one of the things if slash when I go back, I will not skip out on. One of the most breathtaking experience I had in my entire trip, and I think all of us that were there will totally agree with, is please, if you are there, go paragliding over the dunes in Viña del Mar. Our guide James took us through the sand dunes right over the Pacific Ocean where you get the most incredible and awe-inspiring views you will see probably on your entire trip. This was hands down one of my favorite things I've done ever and the views were worth it. The rush and exhilaration of flying is just second to none. It's incredible and if you have a little bit of money to spare, I think it was the equivalent of about $80 Canadian, so 40,000 pesos for us to go each. Please splurge a little bit and you will get the most incredible experience while you are there. I will link James's business, his paraglide, Perapente Viña, right in the description because it was so good. He's not paying us to say this, we just really enjoyed his service, really enjoyed the experience. And the views, the rush, everything in total was something that I feel like everybody should experience once, if not more than that. Very easy, so if you're a little afraid of heights, don't be. Just really go for it. You're, you're gonna be glad you did in the end. Chile is a country specifically world-renowned for its wine and its vineyards. And number four is to visit one of these vineyards. And if you're like me and you're not even into wine tastings or into wine whatsoever, you can still really enjoy these excursions. So when we went, we went to this place called Concha y Toro, which translates to pig and bull. And it was supposedly the second largest winery slash vineyard in the entire world. And it's situated about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Santiago, depending on what part of the city you are in. It's a must go. So if you're into wine, you can have some of the best wines in the world there. And if you're not, you can have some of the most breathtaking views. It's situated right in the valley of Santiago between the Andes. You have these massive fields of these grapevines, and then you have these parks everywhere, exotic wildlife such as birds and different trees. And it's just, it's just the most incredible place. And I'm very, very happy we went. So worth it. That's why it's number four. Now, if you are like me and you're sane, then when you go traveling, it's very important for you to go experience different food and culture. And number three is indulge in some of Chile's most authentic cuisine. And I know that's a little broad, but hear me out a bit. Gotta try empanadas. Empanadas, if you're unaware of what they are, basically these fried pastries with meats and cheese within them. And you can have them kind of any way you like. So I had at this one incredible place in Concon, which is just outside of Viña del Mar, where everybody goes surfing, we went to this really incredible place called Todos Empanadas. I really wish I filmed there, I didn't. Hopefully I can find some pictures and I'll put them in right now. But trust me, these were incredible. Mine had ham, steak, and cheese. Some people had shrimp in there, there's seafood. You can get them with just cheese, just ham, just just steak, just seafood, any of the above, empanadas are a must do. I love them, you'll love them too. Another one you gotta try, traditional Chilean street food, completos. What completos are is basically Chilean hot dogs, except they're loaded up with mayo, loaded up with avocado, and they're pretty big, and you can get them pretty much anywhere. Outside of Plaza de Armas, they've got plenty of completo places, and it's really worth trying. Indulge in some of the food, and don't forget to try pisco sours or piscolas, anything with pisco in it if you're into some Chilean cocktails. So worth it. 
you'll like it. Number two, we're getting a little closer to the number one spot, but the second, in my opinion, the second best or the second most important thing you have to do if you are visiting Santiago is go right up to the top of Costanera Center, which is the largest building in South America, 62 stories high, and once you're at the top, you get the most incredible views of the entire city. You can look way past and see past the Andes. You can see pretty much every single home in Santiago, in the capital, and this is no small city. It is so worth doing for students like us. It was only about 7,000 pesos, which is the equivalent of 14 Canadian dollars. For general admission, it's 10,000 pesos or 20 Canadian dollars. Very easy, relatively cheap for what you get, and much like Top of the Rock, you can go up there and spend as much time as you want. There's no sort of time limit. The 61st floor is kind of enclosed, and the 62nd floor has an open ceiling, and it's incredibly beautiful. It's absolutely stunning, amazing. There's not enough adjectives I could toss in right now to really describe this place. I forgot my SD card on this camera, so I didn't get anything else outside of iPhone quality stuff, but if you are going to Santiago, do this. Go at sunset because we wish we did that. But whatever, it's fine at whatever time of the day you want to go. Costa Nera Center, Santiago, Chile. Very much an important thing that should be at the top or towards the top of your travel bucket list. And finally, drum roll. The number one thing, at least in my opinion, to do in all of Santiago and in Chile when you are on your vacation there is to trek out to Cajon del Maipo, which is about an hour and a half, two hours outside of the city, make the day trip, please go and hike right up the Andes through the Glaciar El Morado. I made an entire video of this, which I'll put somewhere up here, around there, if you wanna check out more of this. But for me, this was one of the most incredible experiences of my entire life. We did about a 25 kilometer loop from start to finish, right up through the mountain, through the glacier, and it was some of the most awe-inspiring views of my entire life. And if you don't go into the Andes, into the mountains, when you're in Santiago, you're really, really missing out. For me, as someone who loves adventure, who loves travel, who loves great views, this was the one thing I did the entire trip that, in my opinion, trumped everything else. I had so much fun, enjoyed it with everybody I was with. We all agreed that this was a must, must see when you are traveling down there. But I will warn you, the hike is incredibly exhausting. It's long, it's tiring. Bring plenty and plenty of water, at least two liters. Give yourself enough time and rest if you can, and you'll get the most out of it. Don't forget snacks as well. It is exhausting, it is tiring, but it is so exhilarating and so worth it. This is my number one thing to do in all of Santiago. You cannot miss out on this opportunity, at least for me. I am so glad I went and I would not have wanted to spend my second day there any other way. Boom. Now that wraps up my top 10 things to do in and around Santiago, but I'm gonna leave you with one bonus thing to do. Go shopping like a local at Los Dominicos. It is very accessible on the subway on the red line. It's the end of one of the lines, depending on which direction you are coming from, and you can go and that is where you get all of your souvenirs, whether it's nice wooden trinkets, jewelry, some wines even, traditional Chilean stuff. Basically that's the way I describe it. It's really cool, it's really neat, it's, and it's a fun way to spend a couple hours of your day, and if you are looking for stuff that or things that you can get your your friends your family your wife your husband girlfriend person you want to be your girlfriend get them something there Los Dominicos very beautiful place part of Santiago and I hope you enjoyed this guide if you did enjoy it maybe subscribe somewhere and if you want to see more Chile videos I have an entire playlist which I'll put somewhere here somewhere on the screen thank you for watching hope to see you soon and enjoy your travels